I'm gonna walk you through how to fill out the 2021 child tax credit form in this video. And that form number I'm talking about is 8812. The form is a little bit more complicated this year due to the advanced child tax credit payments. But don't worry, even though the form is a little bit more confusing, you can totally do this as I'm gonna guide you through the process. This tax video is made for educational purposes only and should not be considered direct tax advice as every person's tax situation is unique and different. Taxes, business, and money. Those are the topics I like to discuss on this channel. My name is Mike Kelly, owner of Mike Kelly CPA, and thank you so much for being here. At this point in your tax journey, you should have already received from the IRS letter 6419. Yeah, it's this letter on screen. This letter specifies the total amount of advanced child tax credit payments you should have already received. The only issue is, for a small handful of you, the amounts reported here might be inaccurate. So we're gonna talk about what you can do if the amounts listed are wrong. But hopefully for the majority of you, the amounts listed are the true amounts you did actually receive. For the sake of our example, I want to introduce you to two of our taxpayers here, Chipper and Penny, and they file married filing joint. And like many Americans, Chipper and Penny have two children. One is a son and one's a daughter. One is under the age of six and the other is over the age of six. Now take a moment and think about the age of your own children. It's important because if your child is under the age of six, you can get a maximum credit of up to $3,600. And that is with the advanced child tax credit payments plus the credit you're gonna get on the tax return. It can total up to $3,600. And if you have a child that is over the age of six, but under the age of 17, that child's tax credit can be up to $3,000 in total with the advanced credit credit payments, plus the credit you get on the tax return. A total of $3,000. I really hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you're finding this helpful, if you could do me a quick favor and just tap that like button, it will really help out my channel and help this video reach more people over YouTube. Thank you. Let us continue our story. Now, like many Americans, Chipper and Penny have a very modest income, and their income is only $75,000 a year meaning there's gonna be no limitations on the amount of the credit they can receive here. What this means is that Penny and Chipper with their two children, one being under six and one being over six, should be able to get the full credit for each. So 3,600 from one plus 3,000 from the other. So total combined credit, if you think about the advance payments plus the credit, should be $6,600. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We were told that we would get half of the total credit we were supposed to receive in the form of cash in 2021. And those payments were to come to us from July through the end of December. Therefore, in this example, our taxpayers, Penny and Chipper, should have already gotten $3,300 in cash already because that is half of $6,600. The remaining portion of their credit should be applied as an actual tax credit on their 2021 tax filing, as you're about to see. One area where we're already seeing taxpayers messing up with this or tripping up a little bit is with this letter 6419. If you file married filing joint, what I'm hearing is that each taxpayer, husband and wife, is getting a separate 6419 letter. And if you file jointly, that's totally fine, but you have to remember to add up both payments from both letters to properly file your joint return. So for example, on Chipper's letter, as you can see, it says Chipper the cockatiel right here, he received total payments of $1,650. And if I go over to Penny the cockatiel's letter, she received payments also of $1,650. Well, how does the math work on that? Let me show you. So essentially, if they were supposed to receive total credits of $6,600, they should have received half of that in cash, correct? And if so, if I divide that half in cash by husband and wife, or by two, that gives us to the amount shown on the letter of $1,650. Now, depending upon what type of tax software you're using, I suspect it will ask you to enter the monthly payment amounts. It may or may not, I don't know, but on my tax software, it does. 
So if I take $1,650 and divide that by six months, that means that Chipper is getting $275 per month and his spouse is also getting $275 per month per child. And so when you add that all up, it adds back up to $3,300. Looking at the actual form 8812 now, what we see is the form starts with the total amount of income which is $75,000 in this example. And you can see that they have two, two children, which we've been talking about that throughout the video. And you can see also on line five and eight that the total credit amount in total was $6,600. But as you can see, once we enter the amount of the advanced child tax credit payments from Penny and Chipper's letter, that amount gets dwindled down to just $3,300 remaining as a tax credit. And we can see the final outcome and conclusion of this credit shown on page two of their 1040. You can see it down on line 67, $3,300. If you notice, line 63 is their total tax. The credit reduces their total tax down to just $2,300 roughly because it credits are wonderful because they reduce your tax dollar for dollar. Tax deductions do not do that. But that's essentially how the child tax credit works and how it's filled out on the form. For those of you who are afraid the amounts reported on your 6419 letter might be inaccurate, then I would encourage you to go to irs.gov slash payments slash your online account and sign in there that should have the proper detail in history and is the most recommended source to confirm what you actually did receive in payments from the IRS. Because if you moved or you switched bank accounts or something happened in your life where it could affect it, then your true online payment should be reflected in your online IRS account. And of course, in that instance, if, if that is your situation, you would not follow what's on the letter, but you would follow what the amounts are within the IRS account for advanced child tax credit payments received. Our goal here is to get this data input as accurate as possible, because if you happen to get it wrong, the IRS has already said it's going to delay further the processing and time it takes to actually get your return through their system and get your potential refund issued to you. At this point in the video, I think I'm gonna wrap things up for you guys. But in the description section, I'm going to leave links to these IRS news articles that concern this topic, just in case I did not directly address your question in this video. Feel free to leave comments below. If you wanna stay up to date with taxes and topics such as this, the best thing you can do is simply subscribe to my channel below. I'm done filming this video. I've had a blast. Now, I hope you can file your taxes and get them out the door. All right, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful week. Peace.